Hey everybody, it's me, Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi out here in Northern California. I hope you're doing well wherever you are during this time of social distancing. And today we're going to do a really fun class. We're going to do something called the Opali Star. And the reason why it's called that is because of this lovely tangle that's on the outside edge of our star here. Opali was created by a gal named Silke Wagner, and I hope I'm saying your name correctly. I love this tangle. It's a fabulous tangle. Lots and lots of fun. So with that said, let's talk about the things that we're going to need for class. So you're going to need to have your Signo Uniball white pen. You know I love these pens. They're my favorite. If you don't have one of these and you do have the Jelly Roll white pen, that will do in a pinch. Then the next thing that you're going to need, can you tell that I love mine, the Prisma white pencil and here's the number on it in case you want to order it. Uh, this is a great white pencil. Charcoal won't work for this class so you want to make sure that you have a white pencil from your color set. So if you have another color brand outside of, of Prisma um, just pick up that that white pencil and use it for class. It should work just fine. And then finally you're going to need to have just a regular pencil uh, without an eraser because there are no mistakes in Zentangle. Then the last component that you'll need for class is da -da -da -da, the rustic tile. This is one of my favorite tiles. And if you're interested in checking this out, you can go to my website, tangledyogi.com, and go to the Tangled Yogi shop and pick up one of these rustic tiles. You'll be supporting me as a teacher, and I would really appreciate that support. And what I love about this tile is that it's super smooth, so it receives the pen work really nicely and also receives the color really, really nicely. This is a nice tan tile, and it's just a skosh bigger than your regular Zentangle tile. I have trouble with my eyes, so this really helps me to work um, a little bit bigger, but not so big that it's not a Zentangle anymore. All right. So with that said, let's get started. Okay, so for those of you who know me, you know that I like to do a little bit of meditation before we get started with our Zen Tangle practice. So let's go ahead and take a comfortable seated position, however that best works for you. Allow yourself to sit back into the chair. Let your palms rest in your lap. Allow your eyes to close for a moment. Let your shoulders melt down away from your ears. Allow your arms to soften. Relaxing through the chest and the belly. Letting go through the hips and the thighs, the knees and the calves, the ankles and the feet. Feeling the entire body be at ease and allowing your awareness to fall into your breath. Feeling the breath as it rolls in. And feeling the breath as it rolls out. Allow it to be effortless. Inhaling. And exhaling. Inhaling. And exhaling. And let's go ahead and start to shape the breath here. Breathing into the count of four. Hold the breath in for the count of four. And then exhale to the count of eight. Inhaling to the count of four. Hold the breath in for the count of four. Exhaling to the count of eight. Inhaling for four. Hold the breath in for four. Exhaling to the count of eight. And then letting your breath return back to its natural pace. And notice, is the breath just a little bit more spacious? A little bit more full? A little bit more easy to breathe? And then in your own timing now, I'd like you to think about three things that you're grateful for today. Just the little things. 
Could be the birds chirping outside your window. Could be that you made a nice meal for yourself. Maybe it was a song that you heard. Three things that you're grateful for. And then let's take a nice deep breath in. Let it go with a sigh. Beginning to wiggle in your fingertips and wiggle in your toes. Gently blinking your eyes open and adding vision back into your practice. And let's get ready to tangle. Okay, so we are going to take this guy right off of the right off of our screen here and we're going to start with a nice blank slate here. You can see that I've got my piece on the table. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab just my regular graphite pencil here. And once you have that, what we're going to do is we're going to start by dividing the space and creating a string. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come down the center of my tile here and I'm going to make a nice line right here and you can see there's a little wobble in my line and that's a-okay with me. I'm going to turn my tile and I'm going to do it all over again. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide the space one more time. So now I've got both sides ready to roll and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do it in the diagonal. So I'm just going to go ahead and divide on the diagonal and I'll go one more time and divide on the diagonal. With that said, you can see this is what my piece looks like. So go ahead and make that on your tile and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we're going to start to make some dots on the piece and these are going to be guidelines to help us work around the piece here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down from this corner and I'm going to come down about, I'm going to say three quarters of an inch and I'm going to make a dot. And you'll notice that I'm on the diagonal line. I'm not on the vertical, I'm on the diagonal. So I'm just going to turn my tile and I'm going to do the exact same thing right here. So I'm going to come down about three quarters of an inch and I'm going to make a dot, turning my tile, coming down three quarters of an inch and making a dot. And then one more time, coming down three quarters of an inch and making that dot. Okay, so now we're going to build off of this here. So you've got the four dots in each corner. Now we're going to come in here and notice that I've started to make two little dots right here. What I'm looking for is I'm looking to make a nice steep triangle. So it's not a wide triangle, it's actually just a very steep one. And I would say that this is maybe an inch and a quarter, maybe an inch, I'm going to say an inch and a quarter. So you can see that I'm coming down and I'm just making two dots right here. It's a little bit more than the halfway point on the piece. So you can see that if I was going to divide this in half, it's a little bit below that. And it's a nice steep triangle. I'm going to go to the next one and do the same thing. So I'm looking for that halfway point and then I'm going to go a little bit below it and make my two dots. I'm going to turn again, do the same exact thing, looking at that halfway point and going just a little bit below it and making those two dots. And you can see they're nice and steep. It would be making a steep triangle. Last one right here, coming down going a little bit below the halfway point, and there you have it. So when you look at the piece now, you can see there are these dots that are moving in a circle all the way around the internal piece, and then we've got these dots that are out in the corner. Go ahead and do your dots, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see that I've got my dots ready to rock and roll. Now we're going to switch into our white pen. So you can see that I have my white pen handy, and you know these signos are a little bit cranky, so just be advised that they may be a little cranky at first when you start. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start in the corners here, and I'm just going to come to that place where I have my dot, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to connect my dots here like so. So I'm just going to go in each corner and connect my dots. Just like so. And then I'll 
I'll come over here and do this last one. Getting right in there. Now, it should look a little something like this on your page. Take a moment, and then once you're ready, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up to the very top of the piece here, and I'm just gonna make a little dot right on the edge. Now I'm gonna connect that dot with these dots. I'm just coming down and connecting. Coming over here, connecting that dot with these dots turning and connecting that dot with these dots. One more time and connect. Take a minute to finish it up and you'll have a little star right in the middle of your page. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so now that you have the star in the center of your page here, we're gonna to start to build off of it a little bit. So we're gonna come right into the center and put a dot right in the center, and this is gonna be our landing point for the next few, uh, few minutes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start right up at the top, right where these dots are right here, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect those dots with the center point. So I'll turn, and I'm just gonna connect. I'm turning and connecting, all I'm doing. Keeping it super easy and fun. Just like so. Coming right in there. And now you've got your star. Sounds like it's a plan, Stan. Let's keep on rolling. All right, so we're going to start to build our tangles into the piece here. Yay! This makes me so happy. Once you have the foundation down, you can do anything with this template. It's so much fun to work with. Imagine all the different tangles you could put in here. It's just, I love it. I think it's so fun. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start to add into the piece. And we're going to start to work on the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down from the top and I'm just going to make a dot about a quarter of an inch away from the top. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come down about another quarter of an inch. So I've got these two dots right here. So I'm going to go around into each corner and do the same thing. So just two dots. See how I've got a little bit of space away from the top? We're going to do the same thing all the way around. So one and two, 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 last one right here, one and two. So now you should have the two dots coming down from each corner. We're gonna take those dots now and we're gonna connect them to each other. So I'm gonna make a seed-like shape or it looks like a little bay leaf, just like so. So we're gonna go around and create that bay leaf all the way around. I'm just turning my tile, turning my tile, turning my tile, getting right in there. Last two right here. Here we are. Woo woo. So now your star should look a little something like this. Take your time to finish up and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we're gonna carry on here. And this is where I think the piece starts to look like toodles. Okay, so we're gonna to start to build the piece here and put the tangle in the center. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come right down off of the right hand side and I'm just gonna use that as if I'm going to carry on from there. I'm putting my pen down and I'm going to create a little bit of a wave in that line and then I'm gonna come right back to center. And you can see, here's my original string right in here. And I just went across, back, and down. Then once I've done that, I'm gonna come down about, I would say a quarter of an inch down the string. I'm gonna make a little dot to guide myself and I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna hit the side of the star here. Now I'm going to pretend like I was creating that line going up and over and watch. I'm going to come down the out the other side 
and I'm just gonna bring in a little bit of a wave into that line and it looks like a petal or it looks like half of toodles here, okay? So once you have that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna do it again. So I'm gonna come down using this as my line. I'm gonna reach over and come down. Then I'm gonna come a quarter of an inch down and go up towards the top. Imagine that I was making my line again and then come down and give a little wave to that line to rejoin at the center here. Going again, coming down, go across that line, make a little wave, back to center, come a quarter of an inch down on that line, and then imagine that you're hitting the side of the star, go all the way up and over, out the other side, and rejoin. So go ahead and do the rest of your petals just like that, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see that I've had an opportunity to do the whole piece here, and it is so pretty. I love the star, I think it's so cool. So now we're gonna build off of the star a little bit. So I'm gonna turn my tile so that it's on the diamond here, and you can see that I've got these two nice strong V-like shapes in here. So I'm gonna come up in here, and this is where we're gonna do opali. And what I'm doing is I'm coming directly straight out of that V, and I'm gonna come up about three quarters of the way out, and then I'm gonna drop down. So you can see that I came up and out. Now I'm gonna build off of it here. You can see that I'm gonna jump, and I'm gonna go one, and I'm gonna reconnect. Then I'm gonna go two, coming off, and reconnect. And now look at where I'm landing. I'm right here near the top. There's three and I'm just gonna let it stop right there. I'm gonna go over to the other side, jumping off the side here, one. Coming over here, jumping off the side of that, two. Now I'm gonna do another deep one right on the inside of that piece. Here comes three. Once I have that, I'm gonna make an arc right off of the top. There's the opali. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show it again just in case you didn't catch it the first time. So I'm going to come up and go about three quarters of the way out and then I'm going to drop back in again. Well, I guess that's more like halfway out, huh? And then I'm going to come in right off of the top here, or right off the side, jump up and out and right back in. I'm going to do the same thing right here, jumping up and out and right back in. Now on this one, I'm gonna come over a little bit more deeply, jumping up, out, and then right back in. Going right over here, just jumping off the side, coming back in, jumping off the side, coming back in, and this one I'm gonna go a little bit more deeply, oh, might jump off the page or maybe not, and there it is. Then I'm gonna make my opali. So you can see how beautiful that flower tangle is. It's a really fun tangle. Let's go ahead and do one more together. So here I am. I'm gonna come about halfway out there. So there's my little teardrop shape coming up off the side and right back in. Up off the side, right back in. Now notice I'm coming a little bit deeper here and coming back and in. Do the same thing on this side. Coming up off the side, jump back in. Up off the side, jump back in. Coming deeper on that last one, and jump back in. Now we make the opali. Really, really neat. So go ahead and finish up the rest of your little V's in here, and I'll see you soon. So you can see I've had a chance to go all the way around. And didn't that come out really, really neat? I just love the way this looks. It looks like it's just ebbing out. It's such a neat star. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a little bit of aura-ing around the corners here. And aura just means an outline. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn my piece on the corner here. And I'm just gonna make a dot that's right above the corner of my star. And then what I'll do is I'll just trace the outside edge of the piece with the white and see how it's just gonna jump right off the side. I'll do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just jumping off the piece 
and coming right off. So I'm going to go into each corner and do the very same thing. So I'm just going to come over here and let that go right in here. And then I'll do it over here and jump off. Coming over here, doing the same thing, making my dot and flowing, jump off, same thing, and jump off. Coming right over here, doing the same thing, and doing the same thing. So now you can see that the corners have that really nice aura to them. Go ahead and finish up your auras and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so now we're getting ready to do some color. Woo woo! If you were here with me in my class, I'd be handing out chocolate right about now. So what we're going to do is we're going to start to think about what color we want to see inside of the petal here. And I have these two really nice colors that I love. I've got a light blue and a dark blue. Now for those of you who know me, you know that I always talk about a little bit of color theory. Each pencil that we have has light, medium, and dark colors here. So you can really see that if it's light, you're getting a lighter color. If it's a medium pressure, it's a medium color. But if you're pressing really hard, you get a nice deep color. Now normally, with a, pick, with a pencil like this, you wanna have something nearby that's gonna give it a little bit of darkness so that when you shade, it's really gonna pick up that color. So a color like turquoise or light blue doesn't have a ton of pigment, so when you're shading with these colors, you wanna have a complementary color nearby. So I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna to start to shade inside of the tangle that I have, so just inside here. So I'm just gonna lightly start to shade inside with the blue, and let's make this nice and big for you to see. And you can see that my pencil's working in a really nice circular-like motion. This helps you to get a really nice silky soft effect with your pencil and get some nice color put down on the page. And these tiles are really great at receiving color because their texture is so smooth. So I've come in and I've gotten that nice and soft here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a little bit more pressure at the bottom and see if I can get a little bit of that darker color from the turquoise that I'm using to go about halfway up. And you can see that I'm starting to get a little bit more darkness from it, which is quite lovely. So I'm coming about three quarters of the way up and then I'm going to start to taper off with the color and what that means is I'm lightening the pressure on my pencil so that it's almost as though I'm just using the original tension that I did to create the piece. So you can see there we've got a little bit of the light blue here, a little bit of medium and now a nice dark turquoise. I'm going to come in and add a little bit of darker color at the bottom here and this is going to create a little bit of drama and contrast inside of the piece. So I'm lightly going through now with this pencil because it has so much pigment in it, I don't have to push that hard in order to get that really pretty color. As I get further up with the pencil, I'm lightening up on my pressure so that it starts to taper off and move into that nice medium dark blue. So you can see that it gives it a really soft way of fading off and then the lightest part is right in here. So let's go ahead and try that one more time together. I'm going to come in with that light blue first. Notice that I'm working with that circular like motion in my pencil here, really trying to develop that nice soft color. Once I have that nice soft color saturating the whole petal here, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add a little bit more pressure with the original pencil. So here I go. So I'm coming in. Now I'm adding a little bit more pressure with that pencil, getting that darker turquoise to establish itself. I'm going about three quarters of the way up the side of the petal here. And now watch, I'm gonna to start to taper off on the pressure so that I don't get a strong line of demarcation and I get a soft blend when I come back up to that lighter turquoise. Then I'll grab my darker pencil and I'm going to start to establish that darker color in towards the center. Once I've got that going, I'm going to come about three quarters of the way up with that darker color. 
So I'm getting a nice soft feel to it. Now that I'm about three quarters of the way up, I'm gonna to start to soften up on the pencil and you can see that it's tapering off the color so that it just blends up with that other blue. If you feel like you need to make it a skosh darker, you can always get a little bit more tension on that pencil towards the bottom. All right, so go all the way around and do your petals and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around and I love how this is shaping up here. Really beautiful. I'm gonna take my white pencil and I'm gonna to start to add just a little bit of a ghostly white inside of the turquoise here. So I'm just gonna come in and add a little bit of a soft ghosty color into this area right here. Just developing a little bit of a highlight right at the top of the piece here and you can see and I'm just softening up the color and it gives it almost like a silky, glowy feeling. So we're gonna go all the way around and do that in each area. So you can see that I'm working that pencil in a circular-like motion just to get that really nice, soft, ghostly white, almost like a, a turquoisey white. And then I'm just gonna keep on moving my tile around in that circle. So you're going to do the same thing. You're just going to go through and add it into the very edge of the petal, and I'll see you in a minute. All right, doesn't that look lovely? So we're going to start to change colors here, and one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to start to work now around the side of the petals here. And you can see that I have this really pretty terracotta brown in my hands. One of my favorite things to do is work with brown on a brown tile. So I'm gonna come in here and very lightly start to shade this pretty terracotta color. And if you're interested in the color number, there's hopefully the color number that you can see, okay? So I'm just gonna come in and very, very lightly start to shade it in. Now you don't have to use the same color as me. In fact, if you don't have this terracotta, you could pull another contrast color. You could pull a purple, you could pull a green, you could pull whatever color you wanna see inside of the piece. I just personally am looking for something that's nice and earthy, something that's grounding. And so I'm just getting that right in there and bringing that in. And then once I have that, I'm also gonna pop that color right into the center of the petal. And look at how beautiful that is. It just kind of pops right off the page. Now, once I've done that, I'm gonna to start to develop a little bit of a shadow on the piece here. And it's gonna look a little something like this. So I'm gonna come down around the more rounded edge of the petal here. And you can see that I'm using medium tension with that pencil, just getting a little bit of that interesting shadow going on and then I'm going to come right down into here and bring that color all the way into the tip. So getting that nice shadow going then I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more definition right down the edge. So once I have that I'll go to the other side and I'll do the same because I really want to make it look like that petal is moving up off of the piece. So I'll come in and add that in. And then I'll add a little bit of definition right along that white line. And you can see how that starts to make that white line start to pop. Finally, what I'll do is I'll come in with a little bit of my white pencil and I'll add just a little bit of that white pencil into the piece, getting a little bit of glow going into the piece. Same thing on the other side right here just to add a little bit of softness. So go ahead and go all the way around and create that kind of shading in all of your petals and I'll see you in a minute. Remember to relax, remember to breathe and enjoy yourself. Okay, so here we are, and I'm gonna to start to bring in a new color here, just to give this a little bit of contrast. So I'm gonna to start to work in this opali up here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to bring that green in and really start to saturate those petals with a little bit of that green. So you can see I'm not going really hard with that color. I'm just going nice and light and saturating up those petals. 
Once I have those petals done, I'm going to grab for a darker green just to give me a little bit of contrast. And I have a really pretty kind of velvety um, olive green here. And I'm going to come in towards the bottom and start to bring up towards the middle of that petal that really kind of soft olive green. Now, once I've got that, I'm going to go back down towards the bottom and give it a little bit of extra pressure. So I'll come in, fill it up, and then get that pressure going. Come in and fill it up, almost to the top, and then get that pressure. So you can see that that adds so much dimension to the piece here. I'm just getting in there and adding that extra pressure in at the bottom. Now, once I've had a chance to do that, I'll grab for my white pencil and I'm just going to add a little bit of a white highlight up at the top. So you can see that I'm just bringing in a little bit of white right up at the top to give it a little bit of a highlight. So that's how we're going to do opali. So go around, do those opalis, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so there you have it. Nice shading all the way around here. We're going to start to build a little bit more with the piece. So I'm going to come in with a new color. And I have this really pretty kind of mustardy yellow that I'm going to use. I guess I'm just going for really earthy tones on this one since the last one was so... Um, uh, pastel -y. So I've got this really nice orange. It looks it looks like a, what is this called here? I can't even read that. Golden something, golden rod. And um, it's a really nice color. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with golden rod and add it into my opali here. So it's a really kind of nice um, orangey brown color. Now, what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to leave a little bit of light right up here in the corner. And I will be using a little bit of white in there later, but now I'm coming back to this color that I had right here, this brown. Now, it goes nicely with the goldenrod, so that's why I'm choosing it. Now, if you used a different color in the center, you could use it there or not, just depending on what, what colors you're using here. So I'm coming in and I'm adding just a little bit of that brown as a nice shadow inside the opali here. Now I'll probably go back in and add a little bit more of the goldenrod into here just to give it a little bit of a blend and a little bit more of that orange uh, color because I don't want to lose it. And then I'm going to come in with a little bit of the white. And let's make this nice and large for you to see. So now I'm coming in with a little bit of that white. And that white is really going to give it such a nice feeling of softness and a highlight here. Now I'll kind of clean that up a little bit by just going around it with a little bit of the lighter color just to soften it up a little bit. And you can see that that just gave it what I was looking for, just a little hint of light. So whatever colors you're using, if you're using a light blue, you could bring in the dark blue with it. If you're using a purple, you could bring a light purple and a dark purple together. If you're using a light pink, you could have a really soft, cold red next to it. All the way around, we're going to go with these in those two colors. So have fun and enjoy the coloring, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around with that. Ooh, how fun is this piece? I'm just loving it. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to pull once again from the center area because I like to carry my color all the way around and I want it to have this visual pulling out as it were. So I'm going to come into this area right over here and we're going to do some shading. So I'm going to blow this up nice and large for you. And what I'm going to do is very lightly with that brown, I'm going to start to bring in a nice light shadow around all of that aura there. So you can see that I'm building up that shadow. And then once I have that shadow in there, I'm going to let it kind of fade off. Now, I'm going to use that same color that I used in my own poly to use it to fade off. 
So I could go in with a little bit of that light brown and give it a little bit of that softness that I'm looking for. Now I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna add just a little bit of darkness right around where that white line is. So I'm just coming in and adding a little bit more pressure on that pencil here. You can see that that's gonna really make that white start to pop. And then I'm softening up on the edges so that I don't get a strong line of demarcation here. And it helps to blend into that lighter color, which is so nice and it just gives a softness. Now if I want to on the outside edge, I can grab that white and add some of that white right into the outside edge, which is really gonna make the piece come together. So you can see that when I zoom back in again, look at what happens with this corner right here and how it has such a nice idea of moving outward. It gives it that softness that we're looking for, but it also makes the piece pop. So go ahead, finish up your corners, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so now we're gonna add some embellishing to make this piece really pop here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up into the opali here and I'll just move this around so that it's nice and large. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of light into the piece here and add a couple of dots on either side just to give it some interest. So you can see that I'm just coming in, adding a little bit of light and some dots on either side. Just turning my tile and adding that in. Add one over there. And you can see that that just gives a little bit of shine and a little bit of glossiness to the piece. I'm just turning that around. So go ahead and go around and do your pieces and I'll see you soon. Okay, so you can see that I've started playing around here and started adding some dots right next to my petal on the inside. So go ahead and grab your white pen and add some dots on the inside. It'll give it a really fun feeling, almost like a sand dollar. It's, it's kind of lovely to work with it. So check it out, add a couple of dots and see what happens if you like it. So now I'm going to add a little bit more detail into my own poly here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to come right up the center of it and I'm going to add a couple of dots. So I'm just adding a little bit of detailing but not a ton just to make it interesting. So you can see I'm just playing there and getting those in. And then once I've had a chance to go around and do all of those in my own poly, I'm going to go around the outside edge with a few dots. So I'm just going to come in here and add some dots into the outside of the piece just to give it a little bit of a glimmer. So go around, finish those up, and I'll see you soon. So you can see that we've gone all the way around and done all of the beautiful white accents to this. I think it's such a fun piece and has so much energy to it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add my, uh, my chop to it here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put my little initial N right here. And that just tells me that I'm done with the piece and gives me a sense of completion, which I think is really, really important. So I hope you enjoyed the class today. And if you did, please give us a thumbs up or a nice review or subscribe to our YouTube page. That will help us to get more presence in the YouTube community. And if you really liked the class and you want to try it on the tiles, you can visit tangledyogi.com and pick up the rustic tile. I really hope that uh, you'll enjoy it as much as I enjoy working on them. Um, I'm kind of a paper snob, <laughs> as it were, so I really like a nice, soft, smooth paper to work with. It just makes the pieces come out so well. So you can see that, you know, every time I come back and visit a piece, I try to do something different with it. And I really had a lot of fun with this one. So I hope you'll enjoy Umpali Star. And I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay creative. 
Once again, this is Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi, signing off. Bye for now.